Hi everyone and Jeremy, today we're going to talk about the Samsung A55, a smartphone that starts at around 499 euros. It's the most expensive model in this A series, and you could be wondering whether it offers enough so that you don't have to spend an extra 300 euros to upgrade to the S series. It was released at the same time as the Samsung A35, which I've already presented to you and which cost a little less. So I'm planning a comparison video between the two, so don't forget to subscribe and we'll start right away with the unboxing. Just like the brand's other model, the phone is simply supplied with a USB to USB-C cable, documentation and a SIM card ejector tool, no charger included. Moving on to the design, the phone measures 8.2mm thick and weighs 213 grams. It has a flat glass back and metal contour, whereas on the previous model they were plastic. It is available in blue, midnight blue, lila or lime and it is IP67 for water and dust resistance. It retains the design of the A-series with its 3 photo sensor in the top left hand corner and at first glance you can't really see the difference between the A05S, the A15, the A25, A35, the difference lies mainly in the material used, here the glass black compared with plastic and the metal edges versus plastic on the model below. So sure it looks more premium, but if you put on a protective cover anyway, you won't really see the difference between all of these models at first glance at least. On the top there is a microphone and a dual SIM or SIM plus micro SD drawer, and on the right hand side the volume and power button which are raised above the rest. On the bottom two microphones, the USB-C port and a speaker. The loudspeaker and earpiece at ear level deliver stereo sound. Overall the phone feels good in hand and as I said the aesthetic stays consistent with the other model of the A-series with a more premium finish that always welcome. Moving on to the screen, it measures 6.6 inches, it's an AMOLED screen in Full HD Plus resolution, 120Hz with brightness up to 1000 nits in automatic mode. New to this year, it uses Corning Goya Glass Victus Plus for protection. The screen is beautiful with good details and contrast and support HDR10 Plus video playback. Many of you have pointed out the size of the bezel on this model and the A35 and it's true that you can find thinner bezel in this price range with the competition and even on cheaper models. In terms of options, you can choose to leave the refresh rate in adaptive mode to vary the speed according to what you're doing, oscillating between 120 or 60Hz automatically or force it to 60Hz to save battery power. For colors, you can choose between a vivid mode and a natural mode. In vivid mode, you can also adjust the white balance. The fingerprint reader is located at the bottom of the screen and it's quite fast to unlock the phone. Inside, we'll find a Samsung processor, the Exynos 1480, with 128 or 266 GB of storage and 8 or 12 GB of RAM, depending on the version, it's not very clear on the brand's website and will be able to extend storage up to 1TB with micro SD. So this is a 5G smartphone with Wi-Fi 6. In terms of performance, I'm showing you the benchmark that I was able to obtain from N22, 3 Mark, and Geekbench. And to give you something more meaningful, given that the A35 has the same processor as the A54, the one from last year, we can see that you get around 20% more performance than the previous model, which is always good to take. And we'll see this on the battery life part, but it doesn't reduce it. For example, on Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, you'll be able to play the game at high visual quality and 30 FPS, whereas on the A35, which has the same processor as the A54, like I said, you'll be able to play at low visual quality and 30 FPS, so you do have an improvement in this part. As for the system, it uses Android 14 with One UI 6.1, the latest version of the system, so it won't have all the AI functions that were heavily marketed for the S24 series, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not sure it's such a big deal not to have them. For example, I do use the S24 Ultra, but I never use the AI function. Also, you won't be able to use Samsung DeX via the USB-C port, as it's the case in their more expensive model, and have a kind of computer with you on your pocket. On the other hand, we now have access to the security system and the use of Samsung Knox. Regarding the audio, the sound is loud enough and the quality is generally good, whether you're listening to music, playing game or watching video, but do pay attention that it seems that the speaker on the bottom is louder than the one on the top. In terms of battery life, the phone has a 5000 mAh battery and supports a maximum charge of 25 watts, so it's not particularly fast, but this is also the case on more expensive Samsung models, so it's not surprising. 
In terms of battery life, I use the PCMark application to simulate normal use and switch the battery from 100% to 20%, which allows me to compare models, and I got 15 hours and 36 minutes, which is much better than what I got on the Poco X6 Pro or Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, for example, which also had similar batteries. So good point for this smartphone. Charging on the other hand won't be at all equivalent as it took me 1 hour and 40 minutes to go from 15 to 100 portion. I'd like to point out that I was using a 120 watt charger but not a Samsung one. Perhaps if I had had a Samsung charger the time could have been reduced if there had been some kind of protection mechanism that allowed faster charging with a Samsung charger but there you go. It's not close from the 20 minute recharge time of the Note 13 Pro Plus which comes with a charger for less money. Moving on to the photo video, the Samsung F55 has three main sensors, a 50 megapixel stabilized sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle sensor, and a 5 megapixel macro sensor. No change from last year, on the front there is a 32 megapixel selfie sensor. Generally speaking, the photos from the main sensor are good with plenty of details and not too much image processing to maintain a natural style. Colors are more saturated than in real life but not too exaggerated either with good contrast and I suppose that this is what people really like actually. Unlike the higher end model, we won't have a telephoto lens here so we'll have to use a digital 2x zoom which isn't too bad though of course it's better to use the main sensor. The ultra wide angle sensor also perform well, retaining details in good color. The macro sensor on the other hand with its 5 megapixel doesn't offer much, so it's just okay. At night, even in a completely dark environment, the phone manages to bring out area that I couldn't see with my naked eyes, retaining detail despite this and with good color. This is the case for the main sensor but not so much with the ultra wide angle which offers poorer performance but that's to be expected. For selfies the quality is good, my skin color seems to be respected and I had no particular problem with it. Regarding the video you can film up to 4K 30fps on the main sensor, the selfie sensor but also on the ultra wide angle or 2 times zoom which is not possible on the Samsung A35 for example, just below in terms of price range. Stabilization works well as you can see, so for most people this is a phone that offers good photo and video performance in this price range. So now I'm using the selfie camera, as you can see we can film up to 4K 30fps, so the quality seems pretty good. I can see that uh, even in, if I walk or something like that, the stabilization works. It, it's not too great if I don't pay attention to what I'm doing, so you can see some, uh, some jitters on it. If I don't walk too much, it will be good enough. As far as prices are concerned, as mentioned in the introduction, the phone starts at 499 for the 128GB version and 549 for the 266GB version, any case on the Samsung friend site. You can find it cheaper by using a coupon code or special offers which are quite common on their site or by finding it on other sell sites, of course, it will depend on your country. Compared to the Samsung A54, it has a new processor, a slightly larger screen, an updated design, more RAM for the basic version, it's still an interesting phone with good battery life, sufficient power, a quality photo video section with the main sensor and the ultra wide angle lens and a rather premium design. The only thing that might bother you is the price for 600 euros, you can get similar features for less from competitors who will even offer a charger and protective case in the box. Fortunately, Samsung often offers discount and if its price drops a little, it could make it more attractive. One point that remains an advantage for them is the duration of updates and the brand's reputation which may ultimately make people choose Samsung over the competition to the general public. Compared to the S series above, of course, there are compromises, AI functions aren't present at the moment, there is no telephoto lens, less screen technology or less power, but in everyday use, frankly, I don't think it's something that's essential for most people, and in the end, if you can save some money, you might as well take advantage of it. While waiting for my comparison video is my review of the Samsung A35, which costs 100 euros less, and I'll see you in the next video.